Welcome to FXCM and FX Markets. Let's begin with a brief introduction of FXCM and then we'll follow with an introduction of the FX Markets. Over 150,000 live accounts trade through FXCM's trading platforms from nearly 200 countries, with an average of 8 million trades executed each month via its trading platforms. Moreover, customer support is provided in over a dozen languages. FXCM has received numerous awards from the investment community, including Best Currency Broker from Shares, Best Retail Exchange Platform from FX Week, and Best Foreign Exchange Specialist from Technical Analysis of Stocks and Commodities. In addition to currency trading, FXCM offers educational courses on Forex trading and provides research through Daily FX and Daily FX Plus. Headquartered in the Financial District in New York, FXCM has offices in San Francisco, Plano, Texas, Hong Kong, London, Paris, Sydney, Australia, and Tokyo. FXCM is a registered Futures Commission merchant with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission and is a member of the National Futures Association. As a vocal advocate of foreign exchange regulation and increased investor protection, FXCM is proud to be one of the first foreign exchange firms to register as an FCM following the passage of the Commodity Modernization Act in December of 2000. In addition to being regulated in the U.S., FXCM is also regulated in Hong Kong, the United Kingdom, Australia, and Canada. Let's now move on to introduce the FX markets. Currency trading is the exchange of one country's currency for another. It's often referred to as the foreign exchange market, Forex, or FX. It's the largest financial market in the world and continues to grow. While the FX market is traded like other financial markets, there are some key differences. We'll begin with the symbol or the quote. While one dollar is always worth one dollar, the buying power of that U.S. dollar can vary both in the U.S. and in other countries. So in order to determine its value today, the FX market measures the value of one currency against another currency. The euro dollar measures the value of the euro in U.S. dollars, while the dollar Japanese yen measures the value of the U.S. dollar in Japanese yen. This really isn't all that different from a stock symbol. Just think of IBM as IBM to US dollars, or IBM slash US dollars, which means that the quote represents the value of IBM measured in US dollars. An IBM quote of 102 means that one share of IBM is worth $102. A euro dollar quote of 1.25 means that one euro is worth $1.25. A euro dollar quote of 1.2501 means the euro is worth $1.25 and one one hundredth of a penny. However, in the FX market, the last digit is not referred to as one one hundredth of a penny, but rather a pip, which stands for percentage in point. When the euro dollar moves from 1.2501 up to 1.2502, it is a move of one pip. The first currency listed is the base currency which is what we are measuring while the second currency is known as the counter currency which is what we are using to measure the value of the first currency. If you're new to the FX market you might not easily recognize all of the currency pairs that FXCM offers for trading. Each currency has a three letter abbreviation used in quoting and you should probably spend some time familiarizing yourself with each of them. You can see here a short list of some of the most popular currency abbreviations. There is no central market for the currency trading like there is for a stock market or the futures markets. Trading is done between the largest banks in the world and is known as the interbank market. Only the biggest traders had access to this market up until recent technological advances offered the opportunity for individual traders to also gain access through different FX firms. This access has lowered the cost of trading for the individual which was one of the big reasons for its recent popularity and growth. Unlike most of the financial markets, the FX market is open for trading 24 hours a day. Three major trading periods define the daily FX market, namely the Tokyo trading session, the London trading session, and the New York trading session. 
Generally, the FX market is most active when sessions overlap with a U.S. London overlap between 8 a.m. and 12 p.m. New York time and a London Tokyo overlap between 2 a.m. and 5 p.m. New York time. The Tokyo trading session is from 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. New York time. Tokyo is the first market to open, and many large participants use the trade momentum there to develop their strategies and as a gauge for future market dynamics. Approximately 6% of the world's FX transactions are enacted in the Tokyo trading session. The London trading session is from 3 a.m. to 12 p.m. New York time. London is the largest and most important trading center in the world, with about a 34% market share of the daily FX volume. Most of the world's largest banks keep their dealing desk in London because of that market share. The large number of participants in the London FX market and the high value of the transactions makes the London session more volatile than the other two sessions. The New York trading session is from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. New York time. The second largest trading market, New York handles approximately 16% of the world's FX transactions. The majority of the transactions in New York occur during the U.S.-Europe overlap, with transactions slowing as liquidity dries up and European traders exit the market. Since California has never served as a bridge between the U.S. and Asia, there's a 50% drop in activity by midday. As a result, market developments in the afternoon during the New York session do not garner as much attention. The New York session is heavily influenced by the U.S. equity and bond markets, and pairs will often move closely in tandem with these capital markets. Next, let's talk about interest rates. Usually the most important factor in the value of a currency is the interest rate environment in that country. Higher interest rates usually lead to a higher currency value, while lower interest rates usually lead to a lower currency value. When the interest rates are rising in one country, investors from around the world will buy that country's currency to invest in the bond market to lock in those higher interest rates. This flow of money has a great influence on the value of that country's currency as the buying interest pushes up the value of that currency. Rollover is the interest paid or earned for holding a position overnight. Each currency has an interest rate associated with it, and because FX is traded in pairs, every trade involves not only two different currencies, but their two different interest rates. If the interest rate on the currency you bought is higher than the interest rate on the currency you sold, then you'll earn rollover, which is called positive roll. If the interest rate on the currency you bought is lower than the interest rate on the currency you sold, then you will pay rollover, which is considered negative roll. Rollover can add a significant extra cost or profit to your trade. Traders who look to take advantage of this rollover interest are referred to as carry traders. These carry traders also have a big influence on the value of currencies, as those pairs that pay the most in interest generates the most buying interest, which in turn pushes the value of those currencies with higher interest rates even higher. Trading the FX markets is the same as other financial markets. A quote consists of a buy price, which is the offer, and a sell price, which is the bid. The difference between the two prices is referred to as the spread. High volume pairs like the euro dollar will typically have tighter spreads than other pairs that don't generate as much trading volume. If you think that the euro is going to strengthen against the US dollar, you would buy the euro dollar pair. If you think that the euro will weaken against the US dollar, then you would sell the euro dollar pair. This latter trade is referred to as shorting the market and involves no additional cost or restrictions in the FX market. Since the direction of interest rates in a country does not change that often, the FX markets are known for their long trending moves. The margin deposit is not a down payment on a purchase of equity as many perceive it to be in the stock markets, but rather a performance bond or good faith deposit to insure against trading losses. The margin requirement allows traders to hold a position much larger than their account value. Margin at FX firms vary. In the United States, regulated brokers can offer up to approximately 100 to 1 in leverage. Outside of the United States, leverage can be even higher. It's always worth keeping perspective on how much leverage is available in the Forex market. Typically, a maximum of 2 to 1 leverage is available in the stock market, and the currency futures market can offer leverage around 40 to 1. 
This additional leverage can result in high profits with a relatively small move in the FX markets, but can also result in large losses. The interest in trading the currency markets has grown dramatically in recent years. Increased government regulation meant to protect traders, along with a low initial investment required to trade live, are but two of the reasons for this new interest. Traders also find that the FX markets move on the same fundamental reasons that other financial markets move. This includes the stock market, bond market, and other financial futures markets. The result has been that many speculators who try trading FX find that the move to trading currencies is fairly easy and worth the effort. To learn more about FXCM and the FX markets, feel free to give us a call. Our specialists are available 24 hours a day, and you can contact us by phone, email, or chat. Additionally, you're more than welcome to download a free 30-day practice account today. You'll have access to $50,000 of virtual money, and you can begin practice trading today. Thanks for watching this introductory video, and good luck with your trading.